What's up ladies and gentlemen, Mark here, and in today's video we're going to be doing a blind reaction to an interview of Rick Ross, aka Ricky Rose, who was featured on Revolt YouTube channel, and you can check the whole interview down in the description, but this is going to be a good interview, he's going to be talking about business and financial advice and investments and stuff like that, and along the way we'll go ahead and condense all the good parts all into one video, so uh, make sure you stay tuned till the end, this is going to be a good one. What is an asset? What is a liability to you? Like, how do you define an asset? How do you define a liability? I'm gonna be honest. You know, I think depending on the role you play and who you are, what's a liability for one brother could be an asset for another. You understand? Let's say me owning a, a private jet, 15 passenger. You know, let's say if it was $5.5 million for one individual, that could be a liability, but the position I'm in, it could be an asset, and not just based on the money I get or my salary, but the individuals that surround me that I know would also lease this jet when I'm not using it. So if you think about it like this, assets versus liabilities. Asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money for your pocket. So if we think of it in layman's terms, people think that home ownership is an is owning an asset, it's an asset, right? Well, actuality, it's not an asset until you fully paid off that mortgage and then that, that the home is putting money in your pocket. So for instance, if you had a rental property, that may be an asset where more money is coming in than it is going out. But when you own a home and you're paying a mortgage on the home, guess what guys? At the end of the day, you don't own that home. The bank owns that home. So welcome to reality. Your home is not necessarily an asset unless you are generating cash flow from that. So this is a great uh, little tidbit right there. If you own a jet, $5.5 million jet, to the person that owns it, it's a liability only until it becomes an asset. How does it become an asset? Maybe he can rent it out. There, I'm sure there's some app out there where you can rent your own jet out, just kind of like, you know, like uh, Turo or like Airbnb. And, and if you know what that app is called, drop it in the comments because I'd love to check it out. But until that liability starts bringing you in cash flow, then it's not an asset. It's a, it's a liability. So that's, that's a good tidbit right there. Let's keep it going. If it's something that I admire, if it's something I want, if I wake up and say, yo, I want to call Jacob and get that $3 million watch, we get it. We're in that position now. But when, I, when, when I'm grinding and I'm climbing up the mountain and it's either we could go to Vegas and spend a half a million this weekend or we get a piece of real estate. It ain't even nothing to consider. So that's actually a really good point right there. He's talking about what decisions that you make with the people that surround you make or break your success in life, right? If you have, you know, if you have time on your hands, what are you going to do with that time? Time's your biggest commodity at the end of the day. You can't get back the time that you invest either into people's lives or projects that you're running, right? So let's just say you have a weekend free, supposedly you don't have anything to do. Are you going to rather spend that time, that energy and that money at a club dropping a half a million dollars like like Rick said? Or are you going to take that $500,000 and go invest it in an asset and maybe stay home for the weekend? Or maybe do something else that's a little more pr productive with your time? So all, it also brings me to the conclusion that you need to be aware of those people around you. Why are they around you? Why are they hanging out with you? What is their intention? What's their motive? Is it just because you have money? Is it because you have good things? Because you like good things? Or is it somebody that's a ride or die? Somebody that's going to stick with you through the good and the bad. And, and a lot of these entertainers have had a lot of good, but they've also had a lot of bad. Who is their close inner circle that sticks with them when it's going bad as well? And that is something that you can look at your own friendships, your own relationships. Who is there when you're going through the lowest of the low in your life? Not who's there who's only when, when you're only having good times, when there's only sunshine happening. But ask yourself, who's around me? Who's truly around me when the rain comes? That was your mindset early, because I mean, in your book, Perfect Day to Boss Up, you, you mentioned that. You talk about how I didn't spend my advance, I didn't spend no. a dollar from touring no. until I saw Port of Miami hit the charts the way it did. Right. After that moment, did the mindset change? I'm like, all right, let's spend some little bit of yeah, What happened then? Well, I, I said to myself, let's do some investments. We're going to most definitely enjoy it. Let's go get that Lamborghini you always wanted. Squeeze your fat ass in that car, boy. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Squeeze your fat ass in that car, boy. Custom Lambo. <laughs> you feel me? But most definitely, uh, it was still, let's take it to that next level. Because we, we, we've seen this. Mm. Honestly, am I impressed? There's very few things that's going to impress me because we've seen this. And if it's something we've seen, I mean, I can applaud you, brother. That may be the most I could do because we, we've seen this. So, you know, the goal is let's do something we've never seen. Let's make that's what's burning the fire with, within me. Yeah. So that's an interesting concept. He's talking about getting things that are, you know, kind of upgrading your lifestyle, upgrading your car. Those things don't impress him because he's already lived that life. He's already been there. But for people, you know, like maybe you and me who haven't experienced that level of success yet... It may be brand new. Like you, you see the flashy cars, you see the, you know, the hundred thousand dollar Rolex watches and all the different stuff that you can acquire. Now, when you already have that lifestyle, it's like nothing. It's like whatever. All right, next on to the next big thing. It, it reminds me of something my my seven figure coach Matt Sapala said, who runs the YouTube channel Seven Figure Squad. Go ahead and check his link out down in the description as well. He's at the point where he's had a. $400,000 Rolls Royce that he's been driving around for the last couple of years, but now he's ready to upgrade to the next version, the next best version of himself. But here's the thing. He doesn't just do it just because he has the money. He only does it as a kind of a reward for achieving a certain goal or a certain threshold or a certain level of success in his life, right? If he builds his business to a certain place, he's going to reward himself, right? He does that with Jordans. He loves Jordans. He grew up poor, never having Jordans. So every time he achieves a certain level of success in his business, he rewards himself for that level of, of success. So guys, at the end of the day, guys, as entrepreneurs, our number one job is to what? Make money, right? We want to make money, be able to provide for our families and those around us. Okay. We do that by helping and serving other people. So it's okay to reward yourself, get to a place in business, hit a goal in business and go buy the new Jordans. Okay, go buy the nice flashy Rolex, right? Go buy the nice car, upgrade your lifestyle. Now, if you do it smart and you leverage credit or business credit, you'll probably pay less than what you would pay if you were to do it, uh, you know, when you were broke and had bad credit, right? So it's all about the money game. How does money work? How does money grow? How can I leverage credit? Stick with this channel long enough and you're going to learn ways to level up in life as well. As I learn, you shall also learn. Let's continue with this interview. Also, speaking of something that you've seen, my mom always used to tell me, she said, a smart man learns from his mistakes, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. So it's like, we also have seen a lot of entertainers, athletes go broke. Without a doubt. With so that's a good one. A smart man learns from his mistakes, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. I hope you guys are taking notes because as I'm going through this interview, I'm, I'm gonna rewind it and watch it two or three times to take notes. A smart man learns from his own mistakes, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. And there's some scriptures in the Bible that I just read recently in Proverbs about wisdom, about embracing wisdom. And the Bible refi, ref, uh, refers to wisdom as a her or as a she. Embrace her, love her, nurture her. What is her? Wisdom, because it will give you long life. That was like scary to you? Of course, every time I come through the gates, I say, damn. Mm -hmm. The homie that you know owned this previously before me made 50 million a night. Mm -hmm. 550 million plus came through his hands. What's gonna separate me from the mistakes homie made? And I began going down my mental list. Well, this is what I'm gonna do different. Learning from those who went before you, right? Always reinventing yourself. My other seven deca millionaire, seven figure mentor, Patrick Bit David, who owns the runs the channel Value Tainment. Make sure you go check check that out as well and subscribe to it. He's also got the PBD podcast. He always says this: if you're not constantly reinventing yourself, you're gonna be left behind. The train's gonna leave you. The ship's gonna take off without you. You need to almost reinvent yourself every single year to a new person, a new level of success, a new level that you're achieving, maybe doing things a little differently, maybe getting different people around you. Reinvent yourself, and that's what Ricky Rose is talking about right here. Um, he's talking about reinventing himself and always learning from the mistakes of his predecessors or even from the successes of the people that went before him. So when you talk about your mom, your sister, 
your friends. How I envision this is like a corporate structure. Most definitely. And it's like the, the CEO, Empire. the CFO, the COO, and it's like a lot of things don't necessarily have to get to the CEO. Why not? Right. Exactly. So talk about that. It's, exactly. You know, how did you envision that? And am I correct? That's how you kind of look at it? Like a Most corporate definitely. Structure? Most definitely. And that's the, that, that's the only way I could see me having 20 current partnerships without any stress, without being burnt out actually looking forward. You can imagine how many interviews I do, how many Zooms, I call them rooms, and, and how can I do that? It's because the small talk shouldn't make it to the boss. You should have somebody on your team that's so hungry that it ain't gonna even get past them. Of course they are gonna check in and run it by you because that's what you do out of respect for the boss, but you already know what the play is. So that's a good piece of business advice right there. If you've ever read the book, Cash Flow Quadrants by Robert Kiyosaki, again, there's a link down in the bio if you want to go ahead and check it out. He talks about the four quadrants going from employee mindset to entrepreneurial or self-employed mindset, but then going from self-employed to business owner and then business owner to investor. The end goal, guys, the end goal for us is to be an investor where our money continues to make money for us, where we don't have to do anything and our passive income, the reoccurring ge generated uh, revenue just continues to pour in because of the assets we've already established in our life. And he's talking about this. See, Rick Ross couldn't do it all on his own. Imagine if he was to, you know, uh, sign the deals and talk to all the different, uh, you know, companies that he's, he wants to work with and he had to do it all by himself. One guy doesn't have that capacity to do it all by himself. He had to hire people. He had to build a team. He had to create a system. He had to create processes around him in order to do the 20 different deals with the 20 different companies that he's doing with. He said the little stuff shouldn't come all the way up to the top. There should be filters in your business, but also you should have people hungry enough that they know the next moves. How particular are you about putting your your name on something? Like I'm sure a lot of opportunities come through your, your right, door. Right, right, right. What is it where it's like, all right, this is something I'm gonna rock with, this is something that I'm not gonna rock with? Really, it should just be something that as soon as I see it, if you've got to sit there and try to sell me on it, it usually, I doubt it will come through. It should be a go. It should be a go. It's not just about the paper. It's something I always speak on. I walked away from seven figure, seven figures up front for a cigarette campaign. I told them, don't smoke squares, homie. I can't help you on that. Well, we don't need you to smoke them. I can't do it, homie. Along our lives, we're going to be presented with many, many different opportunities, especially entrepreneurs, especially small business owners, large, medium-sized business owners, there's gonna be opportunities that are gonna arise and present themselves to you. As a, as a small micro-influencer, uh, you know, with 600,000 on TikTok and a couple hundred thousand on Facebook and another 16, 17,000 on YouTube, my name is starting to get out there and companies are starting to come to me because they wanna do business with me. I've got some of the craziest emails about NFT this and crypto this and, and all that stuff's good and fine if that's what you're into, but that's not something that I want my brand necessarily associated with. So I'm turning down thousands of dollars that people are offering me because I don't want my brand, my name associated with that type of stuff. Like Rick Ross said here, he, he gets somebody that come to him that want him to do a, a commercial on cigarettes. He doesn't smoke. Apparently, so he said, no, I can't put my name on that. Seven-figure deal he's talking about. Seven-figure, like like million plus. And he said, no, he's turning down money because he doesn't want his brand, his name associated uh, to that type of, you know, that type of commercial or promotion. Your brand is your greatest asset. Your name is your greatest asset. You, you have to be very choosy and very picky about who you do business with, who you associate with. Guys, don't be thirsty. Don't be so thirsty for the money that you'll take on anybody and everything just to get a buck. We don't want to do that at the end of the day because it will tarnish your reputation. It will tarnish your image in the public square. So be very wise in who you work with. Mentorship on a whole different level on right, a business right. side. Right. I think us as, us as fathers and men, we got to teach our, our youngsters how to come into manhood and be responsible and take care of yourself and not only yourself, but your family that you gonna create. So you're not just thinking for yourself. You gotta be in a position and um, 
on a level to think and take care of others. Wow, that is powerful right there, guys. He's talking about mentorship. I did a post on, on, on a couple of different platforms recently, and I said, everyone needs a mentor. Let me say that again. Rick Ross had a mentor. All these other guys in entertainment, in the entertainment industry, have somebody that they're looking up to, somebody that, that's coaching them, somebody that's guiding them. Everybody needs a mentor. And then, on the flip side, we need to be a mentor. We need to have somebody that we put our arms around, that we take underneath our wings and we start to pour into. As our cup gets poured into, we need to let our cup overflow into the next generation. That's powerful. That's life changing right there. If that just changed somebody's life, drop it in the comments. I want to hear. I want to get some feedback on what you're getting. Some of the biggest takeaways you're getting from this this video that we're watching. What made you get into the literature game and actually want to? You've been dropping gems for a long time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Your interviews always go viral, clips on Instagram, all of that. People always look at you as one of these business thought leaders. Uh, what made you actually want to say, okay, I want to actually put the pen to paper and actually put it in a book form? It goes along with everything else I'm doing. You know, to me, it was really simple. One time for Neil Belkin, you know what I mean? My homie who actually, you know, sit next to me and just put the pen down as I'm, you know, talking my shit at 6.37 in the morning. And that's what it is. I feel film is next. I already got the first scene of the, the film I want to do. So that's cool. He's already thinking about his next five moves. There's a great book that I recommend. It's called Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Bet David. Definitely want to check that out. Again, links down in the bio. But it's thinking about not just what you're doing today or tomorrow. It's thinking about what are the next five moves in my business that are going to take me to the next place in order to level up in my life. Now, Rick, Rick is all not only thinking about music and his his career in the in the hip hop industry. He's, he's thinking about what what are the movies that he's going to write. He's already got the first scene of his movie that he's going to write. He's already thinking about other business deals at, of, about taking his brand, his name to the next level. What are you doing to think about your next five moves? Now, don't get it wrong. Don't, you don't have to think about your next hundred moves and get overwhelmed and then you get stuck with analysis paralysis, but think about your next five moves. What do I need to do today that's going to get me to next year, the year after that, the year after that, that's going to thrust me into the future where I'm going to be able to recreate myself and build a global brand. That's good information right there. How important being a boss, everybody always says boss, but they don't understand the responsibilities of being a boss. So... How important is it to be diplomatic as a boss? Because it's like, as a boss, people have all kinds of issues. They come to you with everything. You might want to actually physically attack somebody, but you can't. You got to deal with this person this way, that way. Like, what's the... We actually, we actually spoke of it in, in the book. You got to manage your emotions. You must manage your emotions. You got to master the art of taking the L. Because being a boss, you're going to lose, you're going to win. You know, so you got to be able to grow and take from from whatever the situation is. Wow, that's good. So you have to master the art of taking the L. Listen, anybody that runs or owns a business or in is, is a position of high level leadership in a company, you know that you can't just be your normal emotional self and act out of haste and act out of emotion. You actually have to step back and actually overthink what you're about to do. Because again, it all comes down to the brand that you're building, the name that you're building for yourself. Are you going to have respect amongst your peers, right? And that all comes down to how you handle certain situations and certain conversations. So there's another book called Crucial Conversations that I highly recommend that you check out as well. And it just talks about processing problems and having the hard talks with people, but in the right manner. What's the, like, where you at now? A uh, crazy amount of money. I'm sure you got, you know, accountants, you got estate planning attorneys, all of that. But how important is it to actually keep an eye on that? Because we interviewed Fat Joe, shout out to Joey. He was telling us he went to jail because his accountant was supposed to be paying his taxes for him, but his accountant was actually stealing the money. He didn't actually realize it, and by the time he realized it, it was too late. But, I mean, do you, do you, do you think about stuff? Like, do you have, like, people that's wa accountants watching accountants? Like, how do you make sure that that doesn't happen? You don't really need accountants watching accountants. You just need the right one. Once you've been put in position, you're liable, and you will be held accountable, and you're responsible for your job that you're getting compensated for. 
and we only here for one thing. We want to win. I want to see you win just as much as I win, brother. Now, if you can't handle this, if there's too much paper for you, bow out. Check out. Because they ain't going to call me and tell Rosé that the money been gone and the people did it and the did 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 I'm going to say I'm going to hang up. You call back in five minutes and tell me you made a mistake. So as funny as that is, it's so true when it comes to business, making sure you have a small circle of people that are trusted. You got to be able to trust your accountants. You have to be able to trust your, your tax professionals, the people that are helping with your business, the operations, the talent acquisition, the management. You have to be able to trust your people in business. That's why, that's why you pouring into those people and showing them that you care for them is so important. Because at the end of the day, there's an old saying that says they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I used to experience that back in youth ministry with, with the, the volunteer army that we were building. They would have to know how much I cared for them individually in order to even follow through and do what we had to do as a, as a team or as a group. And that's with any business as well. If you're not if you're not your people's biggest cheerleader, like again, my, my mentor, Patrick Bet David, always says, if you're not their biggest cheerleader, then what do they have to fight for? Why, why, what's the incentive for them to even help you build a massive business or an empire? Have you, have you um, ever thought about like having some level, because you're so wise, so smart, but unfortunately, a lot of people still coming into music or just entrepreneurs in general, some level of mentorship on a wide... Most, most definitely, Rose Academy. Most, most definitely, and that's what we just had a couple weeks ago. We called it the first annual Boss Up. Yeah, we was out of town for that, but a couple of our friends went. Yeah, yeah, heard it yeah my partner Alex Boston, he's sitting in here. He, he back in, he over there somewhere. And once again, he played several roles on the team. But um, that's what we did. We got forty other entrepreneurs in the room together over a weekend, and we all just shared ideas, mastermind. That's all we did. And man, it was so valuable. I learned from them and vice versa. We learned from each other. Now let's share each other's platforms. Let's share each other's connections. Let's share each other's resources. So there's another book that I highly recommend called Think and Grow Rich. And it, it's a book that will literally change your life. It talks about specifically the law of the mastermind, how, how, how masterminding with people that are going to help you get to the next level in life that have already achieved success or maybe on the same level playing ground, but rubbing shoulders with them. It's, it's, it's being in proximity to other people that are going to help you be a better you. That's what creates explosive results in your life and in your business. I've been privileged to be a part of some leadership programs within the agency that I work for in the insurance industry, financial services industry. I've been able to go to Patrick Davis' $24 million estate with other six-figure earners and just mastermind with them. Just sit for eight hours at a time and just mastermind and listen and talk and listen and talk. I've been able to be privileged uh, enough to sit with Matt Sapala for cigars after meeting sometimes and just sitting around, you know, uh, you know, a table or a fire and just listening and just gleaning and just building and just taking notes and just learning. The law of the mastermind is something that is an absolute necessity in anybody's life that's looking to level up. Keep that in mind next time you uh, evaluate your friendships and who the people are that you're spending the most time with. Unlike them, you're actually involved in educating the process and, and going through the process with the people, right? We watched you grow into this. We always said you was a boss, but we've actually seen it come to fruition. Right. Were you, we were you, were it, you we super intentional it. about that from day one? Like, yeah, I'm the boss. Nobody made a sound, but let me show you how I am the boss. Yeah, without a doubt. I got to show you. Every day I'm hustling from the day we came in the game and we still are. And we still are. And there's so much more to do and I won't be satisfied until I've done something that's never been seen. And that's just not a dollar figure. It's also, yeah, most definitely, it's, it's, it's plays being made. This is a special time that we in in life. When you look around and you see crypto and all this, you got to see a computer for the first time. That's where we are. We in a revolutionary part of life right now. And it's time to be a part of it. 
And that's just one of the things. You see the platforms, media, and creating your own TV channels right now. Yo, man, I'm inspired. So he's talking about life just being beautiful. Guys, it's all about perception at the end of the day. Perception and, and perspective. Are you viewing the cup half full? Or are you viewing it half empty? What does your life look like? Because I'll tell you right now, when you wake up in the morning, what are the first thoughts that dominate your mind? Is it thoughts of lack, thoughts of not enough, thoughts of I'm, I'm broke, I'm poor, I'm never going to make it in life? Or is it thoughts of today's a new day, I'm going to conquer the day. I may not have it now, but I'm going to have it later. I know I'm going to be successful in life. And you look at yourself in the mirror and say, you are successful. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You are a, a creator. You are an entrepreneur. You're a world changer. You're a history maker. You're a ground shaker. That, guys, will change your life. It's all about perspective. Guys, we live in the most awesome, wonderful a uh, plentiful, abundant time in history. Like Rick said, with crypto and NFTs and all this technology unraveling before our eyes. Guys, don't focus on the wars. Don't focus on the destruction. Don't focus on the death. Focus on the life. Focus on what's happening out there. Focus on your ability to create wealth, your ability to change the world, your ability to impact the next couple generations. Guys, and with that, I'm going to wrap up this video and guys that are listening out there, ladies, gents, go out there and touch the world, change those around you. And until the next video, live loud, laugh louder, and learn to be a better you. We'll check you in the next one.